What's your family's dark secret? My uncle was investigated for the Green River murders. Years later, he was investigated for the Spokane Escort murders. He was good friends with Yates, who was found guilty, and his saliva was found on a beer can near a dumping site. When I was a little girl, my mom told me to never get in his car if he tried to pick me up. Funny enough, he sells life insurance. Story 2. My great aunt had a second child and gave it up for adoption because she was a newly single woman and didn't think she could provide for both kids. This apparently caused a lot of drama in our family back in the 70s, and people stopped talking to each other over it. My generation never heard a single word of any of this. Then one day, my mom calls me to tell me about my new cousin. I was baffled and figured someone had a kid. Nope. That little girl that was given up for adoption was now in her 40s and hired a private investigator to find her biological family. She has since been assimilated into the family and I see her regularly at family events. Story 3. My paternal grandma got pregnant with my dad when she was something like 17 in a small town in northern Louisiana. She claimed my grandfather was abusive, so she and her sisters took off for New Mexico when she was 19. And at that point, my dad was a little under two. On the way, she surprise delivered my uncle, who bears little resemblance to my dad. Obviously, mom is same. She then very openly carried on an affair with her 60-ish year old boss until she met my step-grandpa. He was a great guy, raised my dad and uncle as if they were his own. As the story goes, step-grandpa is overjoyed when grandma gets pregnant with his baby. But my aunt comes out bearing a remarkable resemblance to grandma's boss. Uh-oh. Boss's wife shows up to the happy house with a gun and a checkbook. Says she's using one or the other to get my grandma to go away. So in like 1961, my grandma gets a check for something like $10,000. And she and step-grandpa buy a brand new house. All good, right? Nope. Grandma had innumerable more affairs, was married twice more, and my step-grandpa felt so betrayed after he raised all three kids, he unalived himself. Grandma tried to swoop in and take over his social security survivor benefits. Right before Grandma died a few years ago, she kicked her last husband out, cleaned out their joint savings account, and she and my aunt and cousins took off for Arkansas. Right after I was born, my real grandpa shows up on our doorstep with literal boxes full of letters, birthday cards, newspaper clippings, and my dad's activities. Grandma had gone through all of them and taken the cash and checks and kept them for herself, and just to be cruel, returned the remnants. Turns out Grandpa was a great guy who was never abusive, missed his son like crazy, and was always working blue-collar jobs so he could never really get away. Grandma actually bolted when she was 19 because she had an affair with the local Buick salesman. And his wife came only with a gun, no checkbook. Opie's grandma was out there just playing the whole field. She was trying a little bit of this, a little bit of that, and getting away with it pretty well too. While not the best partner, I do admire the hustle. Story 4. A super distant uncle in my family used to get in a lot of trouble with cops. My nan and great aunt used to hide him, once hiding him in a freezer while cops searched the house. One day he ended up kidnapping an ambassador, successfully ransomed him off, tried escaping the country via boat, but the captain realized he was a crook and took him straight to the cops. Or at least he tried to. Distant uncle instead holds captain at gunpoint and drives the boat several kilometers off land. Police never found him and assumed he drowned. Decades later, my nan got a letter from him, confirming to all of us that he was alive and well. That uncle must have been really appreciative of their efforts to hide him from the law. Sending a letter like that, I'm sure, is a big risk. And honestly, I'm just really impressed that he got away with it. Kidnapping someone holding them ransom? Eh, it's not the best, I gotta admit. But, very impressive work. Story 5. My mom's relationship with my dad was following a divorce. She had two kids with her first husband, a son and a daughter. When she started dating my dad as she was pregnant with my older sister, my dad inappropriately touched my oldest sister. As soon as it happened, she found out about it. He tearfully confessed when confronted, told her he was sorry, and begged for forgiveness. She forgave him. He kept touching my sister. Had my mom done the right thing, had she called the cops or even just left him, I would never have been born. Instead, I was the product of a child toucher with an anger management issue, who tormented and terrorized my family until my mom left him when I was seven. My oldest sister is broken. She has borderline personality disorder or perhaps narcissism. She has never had a healthy relationship with another human being. She is abusive of her siblings and none of us have a real relationship with her. I found all this out 17 years ago. It's weird to consider that I shouldn't exist, that I shouldn't be here, but it doesn't trouble me. I try to be a good person. I'm definitely not my dad. Edit to add a bit of context. No, my oldest sister is not my mom. She was only seven or eight when I was born. For all the people offering support, thank you, but I'm good. 
I'm a happy person. I sometimes have anxiety, but it's mostly related to the state of the world we live in, not my family background. I work in education. I'm more than aware of the statistical improbability of any individual's existence. That I shouldn't exist if my mom had exercised good judgment doesn't affect me. I'm here, so I try to be good. Everyone should try to be good, regardless of the circumstances of their birth. I'll add one story about my family that doesn't really change anything, but maybe it will give some of you the illusion of resolution. When I got married, my sisters were the maids of honor for my wife. My brother was our photographer. As we were ramping up to the wedding, my oldest sister began acting erratic. She got into a fight with my brother, typical, and laid down an ultimatum. It was him or her. She did the same thing with my dad. She didn't want to be in the same place as him. So I called her up and we had a talk. I basically spelled it out for her. This was my wedding. It was going to play out the way I wanted. And she was not able to make any ultimatums. If she said it was either her or my brother, then she would be out. Plain and simple. When I told her that, she immediately dropped the protests of my brother's presence. Because going back to a point I made in one of the other comments, I'm not in a position where she can hurt me emotionally anymore. I don't put up with her crap. But as far as her ultimatum about my dad... Well, him being at my wedding and her bailing on it because he was there felt too much to me like an example of the bad guys winning. I told her that I had no problem uninviting him from the wedding, and that's exactly what happened. From that point on occasion when I'd see him he would complain about it, and when he did, I basically said, you're lucky we have any kind of relationship at all because you don't deserve one. I wouldn't push it if I were you. And he dropped it. That was that. My dad basically took a life and wrecked it. He should have no reward for that. And the person with the wreck to life, now she's in her 40s. I know, factually, that people can get help for their problems. If she ever does that, I'll be there for her. But I can't force her to do it. Maybe someday, in time, but I'm not counting on it. OP handles the situation better than I think 99% of people on Earth would. This is a really impressive level of maturity. I'm still questioning the whole idea of inviting the father in the first place. Don't know how he's not just, like, excommunicated from the family, but eh. Some people have really deep bonds with family, fair enough. But yeah, OP seems really in charge of their own life and... I don't know, I'm just... I'm envious. Not of the, the situation, I should be clear. Story 6. My great-grandmother was married to her first husband, an Italian mobster in New York in the early 1920s. They had four kids. In 1928, six years after they were all married, she disappeared, and no one in the family knew what happened to her. They all quietly assumed her husband had unalived her, as it was known he was very abusive to her. Nope, she ran off with my great-grandfather. They moved to Philadelphia and had changed their last names. They were always very secretive about their past. No one knew the original family names or where they had come from until I took a DNA test and matched with a third cousin that was descended from her first set of children. Her original four children were sent to orphanages because the first husband couldn't take care of them. It was a big surprise for both families and some very hurt feelings for the children she had abandoned. They're in their 90s now, but it's affected them their entire lives. This is one of those unfortunate situations where someone's best choice for them affects others a lot. I can't imagine Opie's great-grandmother having to sit down and make this choice. That must have been incredibly hard. I just hope that things somewhat worked out and she had a life worth living. Or maybe is still having a life worth living. We don't know if she's dead yet. Story 7. I found out that my high school best friend is my cousin. My parents were freaking out when I brought her over. Not as much when my dad was best friends with her dad in the 70s and his dad panicked because of the resemblance. Turns out granddad had an affair with her gran around nine months before he was born. No one in their family knows and only a handful in ours. Edit. Sorry, I wrote this at 1am. Just wanted to clarify. So granddad has an illegitimate son. Dad's best friend in the 70s was the illegitimate son. Was just a coincidence that they're best friends. Almost 40 years later, I become best friends with granddad's illegitimate son's daughter. I'm female. We were best friends in the usual sense. No banging with family members was involved. My granddad was just very good at sleeping with other people's wives. This is the only other child we know about, though. Can't really put that on a resume, can you? Good at sleeping with other people's wives? I don't know. That's a very specific job you'd have to be applying for to put that in your special skills section. Story 8. I don't really think this is a dark secret, but it's something that I didn't find out about until I was an adult. Which was mostly because my grandma doesn't like talking about it, so I think it counts. When I was going through some old stuff of my grandma's after the death of my mother, I found some old photographs of a baby. Not my mom, because my mom had dark, almost black hair at birth. This baby was blonde, and a birth certificate for someone named Francesco, mom's maiden name. I asked my grandma about it, and at first, she didn't really want to tell me. 
but I gave her some space and she must have decided that I deserved to know. Or maybe she was just tired of having the secret because she did eventually tell me. Francesco, who they called Frank, was my grandma's son. He was my mom's younger brother by a couple of years. Apparently, when Frank was three, my grandma's ex-husband kidnapped him and my grandma never saw him again. My grandma's ex-husband, my grandfather, although I don't consider him such, the least reason for, which is because I never met him, and it's suspected that he took Frank with him back to Sicily, but no one is really sure. My grandma is pretty sure that he would have taken my mom too if my mom hadn't been sick and in the hospital due to tonsillitis at the time. It's kind of given me an idea of why that side of my family can be a bit withholding about things. I didn't know my mom had been married before my dad until I was a teenager, but it also makes me feel really, really sorry for my grandma. Story 9. One of my aunties was a very, very ill woman. Like, oxygen to get out of the chair, going upstairs is a one-week thing if lucky. Her son is a jerk, too. When she refused to pay his drug debt off for the nth time because she had no more money, he poured petrol all over the house and threatened to burn her to death. The fumes were enough for her to pass out. He panicked, took a handful of pills, and then panicked at that decision and called himself an ambulance. Didn't even mention his mom. Police turned up with the paramedics, arrested him, and took her in the ambulance. I disowned him instantly. Story 10. I learned this Christmas that my great-grandfather belonged to the Ideal Club. They harassed and murdered local Puerto Ricans. My grandfather was raised in a home loaded with guns that was protected by multiple guard dogs. My grandma told me she was informed by her mother-in-law, grandpa's mom, that her father-in-law unalived 22 men. She also mentioned that those were just the ones she knew about, and there were probably more. My grandma even dug out old pics from the 30s to prove it because we didn't believe her. Story 11. Serial Cheaters. First grandfather made a lot of children. Twelve, for sure. In the same neighborhood mom grew up. Second grandfather made a lot of children. Fourteen, for sure. With underage girls in the same neighborhood dad grew up. First grandmother had multiple lovers at the school she worked at. Many of my aunts and uncles are suspected half-brothers and half-sisters. Second mother had a 20-year affair with her husband's brother. Many of my aunts and uncles are suspected half-brothers and half-sisters in addition to being cousins. Almost all of my aunts and uncles divorced because of cheating, and the ones that are still married are cheaters. Dad had a 30-year affair with his first love until his death. I have a half-sister and a half-brother. Mom cheated a lot on my father during the 90s. I made a DNA test to make sure that he was my father. He is after I read her last will and testament, accidentally, and knows she believes my little brother and I are the children of one of her lovers. I never told my brother. I pray he's not my half-brother and hope my mom lives a long life before he has to doubt. We're not especially handsome or seductive in the family, so this was a shock when I learned about it. I don't want to end up cheating like them. Fun fact, a very nice girl I met while in high school turned out to be one of my aunts. Nothing happened, but before I knew, I wished. Is cheating genetic? There's no way, right? Unless it's rooted in some sort of inability to perceive other people's feelings. I don't know. I don't know enough about biology or psychology or any of that. No ologies I'm an expert in. Seriously though, this is a weird coincidence. But I guess cheating begets cheating, and so if there's a lot around you, you kind of normalize it in your head. But it sounds like OP has the right idea here. Don't cheat on your partners, people. It's so easy not to. Story 12. Great-grandfather owned a large farm in Alabama. He was like 6'6 and hugely muscled and fit. He allowed black families that worked for him to live in houses on his property. He was strict, old-school German, but tried to be fair as long as there was mutual respect. You took care of the property you lived in, and you worked when you were supposed to work. He worked multiple wives to death. He tried to take care of the people that worked for him. Very often, he would pay the male workers and they would run out and blow all their pay instantly gambling and drinking and raising hell, and he would go retrieve them from the jail on a regular basis. The guys would blow all the family's money on themselves, so he would often provide supplies and food for the families and deduct from their wages before giving them the cash at cost. My dad had to live with him one year when his dad lost his arm in an accident. My dad accidentally fell off a horse and broke his arm. His grandfather beat him badly for being clumsy before he would call the doctor to fix it. One winter, he noticed some of his fence posts missing and cattle roaming around free, and found out one of the workers was drunk and cold, and rather than look for firewood, he stole the posts. He beat him to death in front of his place for being a lazy thief, and told the family to get off of his property. Another time, someone had damaged some equipment, so he lined up the workers to find out who did it. My dad saw this while staying there. One of the workers, obviously the guy who did it, mouthed off and said a few pleasant things and then bowed up at him. He reached out calmly and broke the guy's neck like it was nothing. Then he told the others to get back to work and be more careful. Afterward, he just called the sheriff to come and get the body and told him what happened. Simple murders like that were considered justified, so there was no need to involve the courts. 
totally different time and world. Obviously, a lot more had happened, but my dad, who was a big man himself and hard as nails his entire life, never, ever talked about him. And when he did, you could still hear the fear in his voice like he was talking about the devil. Yeah, this classifies as a pretty dark secret. I'll never understand how some people just had that complete disregard for human life. I say had, still have some of them. The idea that some people are just lesser is... So strange. Story 13. My grandma had always told me my grandpa's mother died when he was very young and his father couldn't handle him, so that's why he was raised by non-relatives. My sister and I did a little digging and come to find out my great-grandma was only 15 when my grandpa was born, and my great-grandpa was in his late 20s. From what we can tell, her family forced her to marry her abuser. She also didn't die when my grandpa was little. She died when my dad was a teenager. She just took off and left her unhappy situation when grandpa was a kid and never tried to see him again. Then his dad basically left him on the neighbor's porch in the night and took off, and had two more kids with a significantly younger woman. I think my grandma told us great-grandma had died to make my grandpa seem more sympathetic, because he was a mean old bastard, and none of his grandkids cared to be around him. My grandpa also continued the cycle of child abandonment. He knocked up his first wife just before he left for military training, and when he got back, he said the kid who she had named after him wasn't his, and kicked them both to the curb. My grandma knew that Junior was his, and she used to secretly send the first wife money when she could get away with it, without my grandpa knowing. He tried to do the same thing to my grandma when their first child was born, but her family literally held him at gunpoint, so he signed the birth certificate. He claimed both their other kids. My dad was his favorite and the only son he acknowledged, but he always swore my uncle was not his, and none of his kids with my grandma ever met their older half-brother or his kids. My grandma once told me that she hated her husband for almost their entire marriage but she didn't know what to do besides stay with him. It broke my heart to know she spent so much of her life so unhappy. She is such a sweet woman and didn't deserve the way he treated her. Story 14. My great-great-great-grandfather Mike was a complete psycho. He and his wife Mary had ten kids, nine girls and a boy. While she was pregnant with their eleventh, he kicked her and broke her back while they were outside in the middle of winter. He went inside and left her laying out there all night. The baby was born during the night and froze to death. Mary was bedridden for the rest of her life. Mike took this opportunity to begin abusing six of their daughters. The two oldest were already grown and had left home, and the youngest was just a baby. This went on for four years until he decided the youngest was old enough to start on. One of the other girls, 19-year-old Ida, stepped in to defend her. He told Ida that she could save her sister by satisfying him herself. Afterward, Ida told her mother, who refused to believe it and slapped her. Mike punished Ida for telling by making her brother and sister's each stab her one time. A nun had heard about a local farmer with a crippled wife and seven children. By this time, the third oldest girl had left, and decided she should go out and see if there was anything she could do to help them. She visited while Ida was still recovering from being stabbed, and noticed that the children were very clearly being abused. She helped all the girls who were being assaulted get away by finding them jobs that offered them room and board, leaving only the boy and youngest girl. In retaliation, Mike had the nun murdered and the body dumped in the river. My great-great-grandma tried to tell people her father was behind the disappearance, but he was well-connected and admired. He was an extremely talented musician and knew Ulysses S. Grant personally, and she was just a nine-year-old girl. Nobody would listen to her. All of this was kept quiet because it was embarrassing and scandalous. Most of the siblings never told anyone. Ida explained the scars to her husband and children by saying she had surgery for tumors. Very few know the truth. This is chilling levels of abuse. This man was actually the devil incarnate. I don't know any other way to say it. I thought we've read some pretty bad stuff already, but this is horrific. My heart goes out to every single person involved in that situation except for him. Story 15. My mother has ruined multiple people's lives. First, before seatbelt laws were fully enforced, she flipped a car while the two kids she was babysitting were in the back seat. She made it. They didn't. My grandparents hid all their assets from the family to prevent being sued for anything meaningful. Later in life, my mom wrapped her Camaro around a pole while her boyfriend was in the passenger seat. He was paralyzed. She ended up with some scarring on her leg. Some of my earliest childhood memories are of the Camaro hidden under a tarp, and some guy who I was never allowed to see or talk to was in our upstairs room. Eventually, they shuffled him out the door to be on his own. Now this is a dark kind of secret for sure. A lot more low-key, but that makes it creepier almost. Like, OP's mother has done some bad stuff and gotten away with it, essentially. Really sounds like she shouldn't have a license anymore, though. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed listening to Other Families Tea. I hope you have a wonderful day or night, wherever you are, and I will see you in the next one.